So I was in Antarctica last week and of course it was a trip of a lifetime and I've got plenty of it to share which I will in the coming weeks but while I was there I had an interaction with someone that I befriended on the cruise that reminded me a lot about one of the skills that I learned early on in my photography journey that I contribute a lot of my success to today. So basically, we'd been shooting for a couple of days, enjoying our time in the extremely scenic Antarctic landscape with penguins and you know whales and, and glaciers galore, and we got some great shots. And we had breakfast and lunch together a bunch of times because obviously it's a cruise and, you know, in the conversations that we were having, there was this one time where she was like to me, you know, where are your photos? And she was obviously like jabbing me and, and she was like, you know, everyone else has shown me photos from our expeditions over the last couple of days. And aren't you a photographer? You know, aren't photographers supposed to, you know, have photos? And I thought, well, from her perspective, that's kind of fair enough. You know, it makes perfect sense. You meet a photographer, you see them taking photos of the same things that you're taking photos of, yet you don't see any actual photos from them. And that's kind of weird and, and and I get that. But for me, that wasn't weird at all. You know, I had a reason why I didn't edit any photos and thus didn't have anything to show. And the reason was a habit that I got into at the very start of my photography journey. And it's something that has just been so ingrained into my workflow that I just do it subconsciously without thinking. And that reason is emotional space. You know, photography is a lot like gambling. You can give yourself the best odds of capturing a great shot. You can, you know, upskill yourself and set yourself up with the best gear. You can plan your entire trip to the T. You can put yourself in the best situation to get the best setup at the best time of year. But ultimately, whether or not you're successful, or at least the degree to which you might be successful is up to chance to mother nature and whether or not she decides to bless you with fantastic weather or not, to the traffic and whether your model arrives at the shoot on time, to being at the right place at the right time with the right person giving you the right expression or you know the perfect gait of their stride or the right timing of their movement. But when things line up, when preparedness meets opportunity and things work magically and we get that shot and it's freaking awesome and it's exactly like how we imagine it to be or even better and we're super excited and super stoked about how it turned out we are high on emotions like pulling a feature on the perkies our emotions are elevated and just kind of all over the place and for the most part it's great you know i live for that feeling it's why I'm more than happy to set my alarm at 3 a.m. in the morning for the mere chance of getting a nice sunrise and a decent shot from it. But as professionals, or at least people who care immensely about their art and their craft, emotions are very individual to the person and don't necessarily translate to whether or not a piece of work is actually objectively good. Oftentimes, when we look at our work with a critical eye, we often forget that the viewer of our images, they most likely won't come into the experience of viewing our image with the same emotional rapture that we had when we originally captured it. I mean, how could they? They probably weren't there. And sure, in some cases, you know, that rapture might actually translate through the photo just fine through the capture, but most of the time, it doesn't. And it's, in my opinion, a mistake to associate that emotional rapture we had for that capture, for that image, with the actual image being objectively good. Just because you're stoked about it doesn't make it a good image. And that might sound a little bit 
dark or a little bit harsh, but I think if your objective is to improve your photography over the long term, being able to understand why a certain composition might make a good photo without your emotions giving it extra points is, in my opinion, pretty damn important. And that's why I didn't edit anything initially on that Antarctic trip. That's why even though I was super, super stoked on some of those images, like really I captured quite a few portfolio level images that trip, I think. I didn't show anyone anything for days. You know, emotional space. Rather than getting caught up in your emotions, definitely feel stoked about the shot when you initially take it. But rather than rushing home and you know jumping into Lightroom to edit it, give it space. Let it sit for a while. Let your emotions settle down and look at the image again in a few days with a clear head and an even keel. If it still looks fantastic to you a few days later, sans your heightened emotions, well, then your image passed a very important litmus test and it's probably going to end up being a pretty damn good image. You know, developing the practice of putting just a little bit of emotional space between you and your work makes your work better over the long term. And this is something that I practice not only on a micro level for the day-to-day -day shots that I take, but I also practice it for my portfolio images year to year as well. You know, as a photographer who wants to constantly progress in their craft and wants to grow and get better and better every single year, new pieces get added to my portfolio, hopefully every single year. But the same emotional rapture of an image can end up creeping its way into the opinion of those photos and taint whether or not the photo is objectively worthy of remaining in said portfolio. And look, we're all human. There's always going to be some level of emotion wrapped up in your images. And honestly, you'd hope that you like your work enough to definitely have some, but when it comes to your portfolio images, one of the things that I do every single year is go through my portfolio armed with the emotional space of an entire year. And I cull some of the images I was excited about last year, but now don't feel so excited about anymore. Then as the years go by, some of those images are going to persist in your portfolio. They would have survived the gauntlet year after year after year and all of that emotional space that comes along with it. Those pieces specifically are your best ones. Those are the pieces that you know are going to be the ones that follow you around for a lifetime. The ones that people will know you for. It's those pieces that represent your true style and who you are as an artist. So. Emotional space, a great tool if you're serious about making great art that stands the test of time. Alrighty, that's the video and this was the spoken version of one of the issues of my free weekly newsletter creative in process which you can sign up for with the link in the description down below. But if you liked this video then I highly recommend that you watch this next one about what true style is and how to actually achieve it because it's fairly related to this video. All right, I'll see you in the next video, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.